And I'm going to welcome Julie Hood to our Inspiring Authors Lunch and Learn for, we're, we're in September still this week. Um, uh, Julie, I'm trying to remember the, how the first time you and I met, it, it's been, it was probably through eWomen. Yeah, we're like 15, 20 years or, ago. Or yeah, <laughs> at least a decade or so ago. Um, your bio tells me that you help coaches, authors, experts, and bloggers create and market online courses. You share the best tools, resources, and strategies each week via your email, e-news, and on your website at coursecreatorshq.com. You created your first online program way back in the dark ages of the internet with a $14.95 ebook. Oh my, we would never sell an ebook for that now. No. <laughs> and since then, she's been working to help her clients create six-figure launches and build online businesses from the ground up. So welcome. Before we get going on our conversation and your wonderful slides, I do want to remind everybody that we are being recorded and your uh, participation in being here today is your permission to have your likeness as a part of our YouTube video. The, our goal here is to um, have a conversation with Julie for the next 45 minutes. Please, if you have questions, um, I know Julie has some slides, but if you, are you planning on doing interactive as, uh, where people can ask questions during? Absolutely. So if you can help me monitor as the questions are coming in, that would be fantastic. I sure can. And we promised to end the call around 1215, 1230. If you have additional publishing questions, please hang around till um, after this particular call. And I'll also hang around and, and make sure that we answer your questions, whether it's about this or another topic. So Julie, I'm going to turn the host over to you. And let me find you here, participants. Come on. Technology, we're going to make you host. All right. Thank and let you. me take over the screen. And I'll monitor the, if you drop your questions into the chat bubble, and we'll moni I'll monitor that for you. Yes. So feel free to interrupt me as, as we're going along with questions as or things you want to add. And thanks everybody for sharing your lunch today. I appreciate you jumping in. Um, I'm excited because we're going to talk about one of my very favorite topics, how to create an online course quickly and easily. And I know a lot of you are either aspiring authors or you have a book already. And they are some of my favorite folks to work with because you already know how to create content. We just need to tweak it a little and turn it into a slightly different format. So um, this will be fun. I'm Julie Hood and CourseCreatorsHQ.com. The big thing that we've got going on right now that's really fun is that we've got a new podcast. So if you are podcast listeners, come find us at CourseCreatorsHQ.com. And I also have a free bonus in case uh, you're really interested in this. And I'll put this link in here and then again at the end um, coursecreatorshq.com slash Kathy. And it's talking about where to host your course, which is once you decide that you're going to do a course, it's one of the questions that comes up a lot. So we'll, we'll talk about it a little bit more too at the end, but that's a free training that I like to give away. So let's start with talking about how to pick the topic for your course. Because this can be one of the more challenging parts of it is to figure out what exactly is going to make a good topic and will people be interested? Should I jump into this topic or that topic? I have a ton of ones I could do. And especially if you already have a book, you have some content that you can work with and trying to figure out, okay, should I turn the whole book into a course? So we'll, we'll start and talk about it and then we can even do some specific situations if there's any that people want to talk about. So if you have any paper with you, we're going to do a little bit of of an exercise. If you start by drawing a line from the top to the bottom, so you've got this, the paper split in half, and then if you draw another line, you end up with four different boxes because when the exercise has four different steps to it. So um, we'll have four boxes, one for each step. And the first box is, I like to have people start with, what am I currently selling? So maybe for a lot of you, you've got a book already going. You might have some coaching already started. 
You might have um, other offers that you make. Maybe you do one-on-one -on -one training, all those kinds of things. So start with that because we can definitely take all of that material and then put it into new formats to make your course. The second box is what is being sold now. And this is where after we finish, if you wanna go out and look at Google, type in your topic and look at which line items have the word add next to them. You'll see the little add icon in the corner. And that means that people are using those ads to sell a topic that's similar to what you're already doing. And I always tell folks, you want to see things in your area. You don't see anything that's more of an issue because then you have to create your audience. If you're already seeing things being sold, that's fantastic because that means there's an audience that people are being uh, willing to pay for. And what you will do as the expert is give your angle, your techniques, the way you present, that's what will make your course unique from the ones that you see out there from other <coughs> options. Because we all know you can go out to Google and go out to YouTube and you can find a bazillion resources on any topic. But what you do as the expert is that you are curating the best information in the right order with the experiences that you have. So that's what will resonate with your audience. I also like, and I'm sure you all have already done this as authors um, to go out to Amazon and see what kind of books are out there. Because once again, you just wanna see some things that are in your topic area. If you don't find anything, that doesn't mean you can't do a course on it. It just means that it might be a bit more challenging to get in front of your audience. And then the third box, I like to have folks think about what is making you unique? Do you have a framework that you use in your book or with your coaching clients? How do you do things differently? This uniqueness is what will resonate with your audience. And then you put that into your course and it helps so much to when you're trying to get in front of the right audience and then also to resonate with them to get them to actually sign up for the course. And then the fourth box is probably the most important one when you're thinking about a course is to think about what is the transformation that I can provide. So what exactly am I taking people from where they are to where they're going to be at the end of the course? And the more specific you can be about this, the better your course will be and the more useful it'll be for your students. So I really like folks to spend some time here with my coaching clients. We, we are really talking about this before we get started because this is really important. I have a book author right now that I'm working with and she's turning her method into a course. And I said, we've got to be really specific about how you're helping people so that when they come into this course, they're at this point and by the end, they're at this point. And that not only helps you connect with the right people, it also really helps you put the course together because then you know, okay, I need to include this step because they need it to get to the end of the line, but I can throw this other one out because that's what I see one of the biggest mistakes that a lot of course creators are making is that they try to put everything they know into their course so that they can sell it at a higher price. But the challenge with that is that you probably would have maybe even taken some of these courses where the uh, teachers have everything in there and it just doesn't work very well. And I'll give you a quick story about this. Um, back when I was in college, I ended up in a honors calculus class, which was really crazy. I liked math, but we hadn't had any calculus in high school. So I don't know what they were thinking put me into this class. We had this professor um, who was probably 70 years old, nice enough guy, but he was fascinated by all the little details of calculus. He loved these really intricate problems and would come in and put them on the board. And he was in a class full of brand new freshmen who didn't know much about calculus. And one day he came in and he's, he was really angry with all of us. And he said, we had the test last week and you guys didn't do better than the regular classes of calculus. You're in the honors class, you should be doing better. And what I realized, one of those things that the instructor was so far ahead of where we were 
and so involved in the intricacies that he couldn't teach us the basics. So sometimes being just slightly ahead or far enough ahead that you can help your students, that can be more beneficial for them. Like the other classes, they had TAs that were helping them learn calculus and they did much better than we did on the tests. So that's one of the things I like to share with folks is you do not have to be a PhD, an elaborate expert to be able to put together resources that will help your students. You just need to be able to break it down for them and give them exactly the steps that they need. All right, Kathy, do we have any questions yet before I go to the next section? Sorry about that. Um, which was actually my next suggestion was if you're not muted on your end, if you could mute yourself on that end, that would be great. And then um, if we have a question, Julie, you'll get to unmute them. Okay, That's sounds good. Question. Great, thanks. I tried to do it on this end, but I, I gave away my host privileges. You have them. Yeah. Oh, gotcha, gotcha. Okay, so no questions so far though, right? We're good, yeah. Okay. Thanks. All right, so now let's talk about the next step. So you've kind of figured out, all right, I think I have an idea of where I wanna go. Um, what are some of the best ways to actually outline the course? And this is what makes putting it together so much easier for you because once you get this really um, specific outline together, then you can just fill in the blanks and get the course completed. And probably similar to how when you were working with your book, I'm sure you, the um, book coaches tell you to kind of outline your chapters, same concepts here. Um, and I like to start with talking about, a lot of times I'll work with coaches or trainers who work one-on-one -on -one, and then they're trying to figure out you know, I do very specific things with my one-on-one -on -one coaching and training, and I'm not sure how that would convert into a course that could apply for everyone. So one of the things we'd like to do with this is if you can sit down and come up with a framework or a standard method or a, um, a few unique concepts that you can help folks with, then you can make those generalized. So I'll give you an example to make this a little clearer. Um, one of my coaching clients who took my 24 hour course creator class, he helps people with trauma. And he said, you know, each person has their own trauma. So it's really kind of difficult to give just general advice. And so what we came up with were four of the most common traumatic experiences that his clients tend to have. And then he created the strategy for that specific trauma. So he had basically four different um, tracks that his students could go through and it helped him connect with specific traumatic experiences uh, on that audience. So there is some pre-work if you're, if you're used to doing more of a one-on-one -on -one or a very customized program. You do want to sit down and try to figure out, let's come up with some kind of framework or some kind of specifics that we can group into different topics. And that will make your course infinitely better and um, more helpful for your students. So we've got this unique framework that you're putting together. Um, there's, I'm sure you've seen lots of these. One of the ones I do is my 24 hour course creator program. The framework is that in 24 hours, will take you from no course to your first course. It's not your signature end all be all course. It's just your first course. You don't have to think a, a lot about what to do. I tell you every hour, you know, hour number three, go sit down and do this step. And so you get an hour to work on it. It helps because um, it keeps you from getting stuck in a lot of that analysis phase or a lot of the research phase. Like I give you an hour, I say you get what you get and then, you know, move on to the next step. So you could do something very similar with this for your topics where you're putting together that framework or the path, maybe it's a time specific path, maybe it's just the, the order that people go through, but that framework will um, help you to take and work through how, to, how your course should progress. So once you've got that, I wanna share three different techniques of how you can put this together because uh, folks kind of think in different um, methodologies and so what will work for one of you may not work for someone else so I try to give these three different ideas the first one is that you grab a stack of index cards or post-it notes 
and you write down different topic ideas for your course on each index card or each post-it note gets one idea. And then you can sit down and put them into steps and put them into order and like move them around on the table and take a picture of it once you get, get everything in order. And maybe there are some of the post-it notes that get thrown out, like this isn't really necessary, so we'll save that for a different course. But that way you can, it's a really great way to start from individual topics and then put it into a logical order. The second technique is a tool that I really love online. If you like to type and you like to be online, it's called Workflowy and it's workflowy.com. They have a, an outlining feature that's really fast and easy so that you can like move things around and collapse them, um, expand and then have topics that you put more text in. And it's just one of the best tools I've seen for doing outlines online. So that's also an option. And then uh, this technique is what I actually use on that first uh, 1495 ebook that I used. I just sat down with a piece of paper and I made a big list of all of these different topics that were related to the, the ebook that I was working on. And then I split them into, I picked the 30 best ones and I called it the 30 day plan. So each day had its own plan or its own option. And so I think I had like 45 and so 15 of them I just threw out, but I put them in order so it made sense that you do this one before that one. So depending on your course, it may just be a list of 10, 20, 30 different things that people are trying to do. And then the last, I don't have a slide for this, but I will throw this out because I know there's a lot of folks that love to use mind maps. So if you're a big mind map person, that can also work for using and putting together the outline for your course. So it just really depends on how your brain works and, and which of those techniques works is the best for you. Um, I found through the years that there are folks that just love to do lists. And then I had um, another person I was working with, they're like, I can't handle a big long page with all kinds of information on it. I need to have something more separate. So we did the index card option with her and that felt so much calmer. So it just really depends on how you work. So I'll give you a couple different ways to sort of organize your thoughts and put your outline together. All right. So once you've got this topic, you've got an outline, you're going to start putting the course together. One of the big things that I like to tell people about that comes up a lot is where then, as I'm putting this course together, where am I going to put it? Because you want to have it online somewhere so that folks can get to it when they've paid you for it, but that it's restricted if they haven't. And um, there's lots and lots of tools that you can use for this. You may have heard of some of these, Kajabi, Teachable, Thinkific, um, Podia. There's lots and lots and lots of them that you may potentially be able to um, uh, use. And so I have, uh, I put five questions in here when you get to this point, use that training uh, link because there's more to it, but I wanted to give you kind of a place to get started. So if you're building an audience already and if you have an email newsletter software, start there because some of the tools work better with some of the email software tools than others. And so what you wanna be able to happen is that they interact really well. So if someone signs up for your course, they automatically go on your email newsletter or if they're on your email newsletter, they can get into the course and get the emails related to the course, though that's one thing that can either be difficult or possibly more expensive to make it work. So you wanna look at that, like is the email software gonna work? Okay. The second one is, and this one slides through a lot on a lot of folks, it's does the tool host the videos for me and become a video player? So I know there's one tool right now that in a lot of my Facebook groups, people are all excited, like, I love this tool. And I always keep pointing out to them, look, that one does not host your videos for you. So you're gonna have to either, you could use YouTube and get all the ads and the, the YouTube recommendations, which is not very professional, or you're gonna have to pay for something, someplace to put your videos. So a lot of the tools like um, Kajab, Teachable, Thinkific, I know they all host the videos for you and you don't have to pay extra for more students or more video usage. 
So that's just one thing to look at as you're looking through the different tools. The third one is obviously the cost. How many courses can you create if you think you might be doing more than one or how many students can you actually have in the course? So they, the pricing is usually varies um, and some of the tools will, will vary depending on how many courses you have. Some of them will let you have unlimited courses, unlimited students, but then they charge more as a percentage of your sales. So there's lots of different ways that the cost can adjust. So just take a look at that. Hey, Julie, um, the, I do have a quick question. I know uh, yeah. someone here in St. Louis created their uh, online teaching program using Vimeo. Is that uh -huh. one of the other resources or is it different than like Teachable? So Vimeo will let you restrict access to the course, but I think you only get one like password. So, you know, you're, you're, you can't restrict by student. You're just restricting access to the course. And then um, the other thing that it probably doesn't do quite as well is some of the other actual online course hosting technique tools will let you put the lessons in order and it'll keep track of where your student is at. And I don't know if Vimeo will let you do that. So it does host the videos, but it doesn't do, like if I have say a six lesson course and I want uh, someone's on lesson three in the middle of lesson three, they can come back into it and it shows them like, this is how far you are. This is the next lesson that you need to do. So. Um, it can work if that's what you have, if that's what you need to get started, um, you can use it, but it's not one of my top favorites because some of the other tools have so much more. Uh, so if you could list your top favorites, I'll type them into the chat area. We've got somebody asking for. Oh, sure. Okay. So um, I'll give you a, 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 a kind of a range and then <laughs> It really depends on your specific situation. So um, one of the ones I really like is Thinkific that you can, all of these, if you go to coursecreatorshq.com slash Thinkific, it takes you right to the tool and where you can sign up. And some of them, I've got some partnerships. So you might be able to get like, another one I really like is Kajabi. And I've got it set up to where you can get 28 day trial with, if you go through the coursecreatorshq.com slash Kajabi, that'll give you 28 days where they normally only do 14. So, um, so we have Thinkific, Thinkific I really like because, because they have a free option to get you started with three courses. And so that's one of my favorites because it gives ch people a chance to get going and get some cash coming in the door. And then you can, you know, either stay with them or move on to one of the more expensive ones. Kajabi is fantastic because it's one of those all in one kind of tools. So it will not only host your course, it'll do your email newsletter, it'll host your website, you can do a blog. Can have you a, spell that? Yeah, sure. It's um, K A J A B I. Okay, thank you. Uh huh. Um, Teachable is also really good. They, um, do their training and support is really good. So they have some um, features that I really like. Let's see, those are probably my top three that are just online course hosting. And then there's tons of others. If you have a WordPress website, you can also use something called Learn Dash um, with your website. But I highly recommend if you do that, that you've got a good tech person or you're very techy yourself. There's a lot to making all the technology on that work correctly. So a couple of my clients started years and years and years ago when that was the only thing that we could do. And um, now we're running into some technology issues because it was older to where with the other online course hosting tools, you won't run into as many of those problems. Okay, great. Thanks for spelling those out. Sure, um, sure. Julie, what did you say the the um, the website was, you mentioned your website and then you said something after that. I was trying to write it down and I didn't get it all. Sure, sure. It's um, coursecreatorshq.com okay. and then forward slash, you know, whatever tool, whether it's slash 
Kajabi slash teachable slash Thinkific. Um, the Kajabi one for sure, use that because you'll get a whole month of a trial to test it out and see if you like it. Perfect. Thank um, you. I think on their website, they only give you 14 days. Okay, so any other questions before I add a few more of these um, items to consider? Okay, so the fourth one to have you think about is whether the tool includes an affiliate program. And this is kind of an advanced concept, but I like people to think about it early on because as your course takes off, you're gonna to wanna to be able to do this. So what happens is that if someone wants to be a salesperson for you and sell your course and they earn a commission every time they get a student for you, then you can use an affiliate program to track all that. So it will track how many clicks they're getting for you. And then when someone buys, it'll say, like if Kathy is an affiliate of mine, if she sells one of my courses, it shows up and it says Kathy sent 10 clicks and she has five people that signed up. And so she needs to get this amount of money based on the affiliate program. So some of the tools have that built in. Um, Kajabi, I think it's their second level has it. Teachable and think of it, if it also have it in some of their higher levels. So it's just something to think about because you don't wanna get everything all set up You've got your students into a tool that they're using, they're going through the courses and then you wanna to change to something. Because what happens is let's say they're on lesson three, if you switch to a new tool that history usually can't be transferred. So you kind of wanna figure this out early on, which, which one you wanna use so that you don't have to move later. Um, and then the fifth question is actually one of the most important and that's what is the student experience like. So if you take classes online and you see what the tools are like and you can see whether you like how the um, experience goes through for the student. So is it logical? Does it make sense? Can you find all the things that they're mentioning or the downloads, you know, the worksheets and the workbooks? Is it really easy. I was in, um, and I take obviously a, take a ton of these online courses, and I was in one um, that uses what's called Mighty Networks, which is one of the ones I don't like <laughs> for online courses, so stay away from that one. And it's actually meant to be more of a networking, online networking tool, but they had put their online course into it. And the problem was we couldn't separate out all the comments because they had tons and tons of students separate all, all the comments from all the students to just get to the lessons part. It was, it was really frustrating. And, and I've done a lot of these, so I can imagine if you hadn't done these courses, how hard it would be to get to your actual courses. So that's just kind of the last thing as you're playing with the test drives and you're trying it out, you know, see what the experience will be like for your students. And if there's probably one that you like better than others. So, um, this is that link of the course creators hq.com slash Kathy. It's, it goes into a lot more detail and there's a workbook around figuring out which of these you should use because if you have some of the pieces of an online business already, then some of the tools are better for you than others. So like Teachable and Thinkific, they're primarily hosting your course and selling your course versus like a Kajabi that's the all-in-one doing your website and everything. So depending on what you have already, you may not need um, one tool could be better for you than, than another. So I'm not one of the folks who says, oh, you know, this is the only tool you should use. Everybody should put their courses on that. I think it really varies a lot depending on what you've got already and what you're trying to fit into your current technology setup. So um well, that was what that i have but i'm sure there's lots of questions yes so one of the questions i have is so tell us a little bit about how you help if i wanted to create a course how would you help me what are the parts that you do and then what are the parts that you help me do okay so i have three different levels that i work with folks um the first one is more of a do-it-yourself kind of option. Um, it's 
you know, take my course on how to create your course. That's at 24hourcoursecreator.com. And that's the most inexpensive way to get started. <laughs> and then the second level in October, um, starting on the 18th, we're doing a group coaching version that I'm excited about. We did this in the summer and it worked really well um, with the goal of spending an hour a day to get your course done. So um, that's going to start in October. And then in, the other thing that I do is a couple different versions of one-on-one -on -one coaching. So the first one is that we meet either every week or every other week. I share with you all of my templates and all of my tools. We meet for about 30 minutes. We talk about, okay, where are you at? Um, use my, my um, planning sheets. What's next? Here's what you're going to work on this week. If you have questions, then we, we figure it out. But you're kind of responsible for keeping yourself moving forward and finding if you want helpers, if you need VAs, if you need video editors, that's kind of on you to sort of, I'll help you send you in the right direction, but then you, you manage the whole project. And then I have my highest level program is where we, we basically handle the whole setup and the whole um, project management for you. And you're just responsible for creating content. So there's kind of those four different levels. Um, the DIY program starts at 297. The group coaching is 497. Um, the the one-on-one -on -one coaching without the project management is uh, usually somewhere between 500 and 1,000, depending on how often you want to meet. And then the do it all for you, I have to do specific um, a proposal because it's yeah. everybody's different. It really depends on how big your course is and how many videos you're going to have, that kind of thing. Right. So I know, um, would I have, if, could you, could someone work with you if I don't have a book? Yes, absolutely. Um, and actually a big part of the initial part of working together is putting together, okay, what's my course going to be about? What's the outline and the topics? You know, we kind of hit the high points of that um, during the, today, but there's, there's a lot of different places and a lot of different pieces of how are we going to make this into a, a logical course that makes sense from A to Z. Well, if you want to go ahead and unmute everybody, uh, sure. that way people can chime in if they have additional questions. I know you mentioned um, a couple times about the, the gift that you're offering. If you want to go into a little bit more detail about that. Um, oh, thanks. Or if you want to give hosting back to me and I can unmute everybody. Yes, that would probably be better. Okay. <laughs> I've got a button that says mute all, but it looks like everybody's already muted. So there you go. Uh, okay, you I should be hosting. Now. I have the power. Okay. <laughs> so let's see, Karen, looks like everybody's going to have to unmute themselves, which works also. Yeah. So yeah, tell us a little bit more about this. Um, gift that you're offering sure so it's at coursecreatorshq.com slash kathy and it's a training that i did specifically about picking which of these hosts that's right for you because there's a lot of different moving pieces to figure out your specific puzzle so um it has more questions it has a workbook that you can work through and say okay i need these pieces i've got these pieces which tool will fit the best for me so and if you have questions after that, feel free to contact me. Um, it's one of the things I like to figure out is like, which tool is the right one for you? <laughs> so. so each of these hosts, they have their own pricing models, but basically it sounds like it's probably a monthly fee or, or annual and pay less kind of stuff. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. And they vary um, quite a bit in the pricing. So depending on what you're, what you need. What do you see as the overall benefits of having a, an online course? Um, is it, do I have to be in attendance for every time this goes out or is it a way that I can just put it out there and it kind of self, it takes care of itself? Right, so once you get it set up and you get the course going, people can sign up whenever on your um, sales page and then they can take it whenever it fits for them. 
So it varies a lot in how people put the initial course together. So sometimes what people will do is instead of trying to record everything ahead of time and have it all ready to go, is the first time they do a course, they'll do it either live, maybe Facebook Lives or Zoom and record it. And then that becomes the content for the course. But that first time through is more of a live session with, with um, their students. So I've seen, yeah, I've seen a, a couple people that I have followed have done those courses, but then they're also asking you to put questions into the chat box at the same time. And so do they have, do they hire someone to monitor those chat boxes? Yeah, you kind of do need someone. I, I have seen a few people that are really good at, they'll have the chat up and they're able to kind of bounce back and, por and forth. But generally, the, you know, if you're focused on teaching, it does help to have someone, a VA or, or an assistant that can, can, like you're feeding me the questions, that helps, yeah. that helps quite a bit. I see we have a couple more here too about pricing. Yeah. So um, sweet spot for pricing is, uh, uh, like we could probably have a whole session on this, but I'll give you kind of my high level where I like to go with it. So one of the things I do is I start with my courses and I start them somewhat lower. And then as they get better and I add more and um, more tech um, templates and more checklists and more people have been through it, then I increase the price. So 24 hour course creator actually started at 20 bucks the first time I offered it. And then now it's up to 297. So each time there was another sale, I kicked it up, which works better than if you start something really, really high and then you decide, oh, maybe I need to sell this lower. Then the people who signed up at the higher price are uh, feel like they, you know, they don't feel like they got gypped or something. So if you could start low and then pick it up with your audience. Um, the second thing I like to compare is what you're paying if someone's teaching you either with coaching or if they're doing some kind of training sessions, you can pair, compare pricing so that if they're having, um, doing a course instead, you know, what would be a relevant pricing comparison to that. So this can help a lot. I know Richard, you were talking about how you were, you're presenting to like 34 different people tomorrow. So if you had something where it was an online course that you could offer that company and say, hey, all of your 34 people can all take this course and then you could figure out the pricing that would work to fit that and it would make it worthwhile yeah. to you. Yeah, I, I appreciate it. Cause what I, I, all my programs can be one hour to a half a day. So I like what you're talking about so that I could take the speech for the hour as a presentation and then upsell a more elaborate in depth five sessions or whatever and sell that as a course independent. Right. Yeah. And then the other thing you can do too that I really like is you can include your courses as bonuses. So they sign up for an all day training with you and you give them um, an hour long, all of their people, another hour long bonus. So it helps you kick up that, that nice. initial presentation price too. Thank you. Uh -huh. so, I see another question. Uh, yeah. Podia. Yes. So I like Podia cause it's one of the more ex inexpensive ones. Um, make sure you go through their trial version if they have it or like test it out. One of the things that I didn't like about it was the way the course was laid out, that it wasn't as clear as far as I'm on lesson three and these are the documents that go with lesson three. So I know I've had um, a few folks in some of the Facebook groups that were saying they didn't like the layout of Podia, but there's lots of people that use it. It's also really good pricing. So I think it's, it can be fantastic. It's one of the all in one kind of tools. So it can do a lot more for you. It's an email, newsletter, website, host your course. Having all of that together, I will tell you, is a lot simpler <laughs> than like my setup because I've been at this for a while. I keep adding pieces to it and trying to keep everything working together is, is kind of a tech headache. So having those all-in-one tools is, is a good idea. If you're, especially if you're not super techie, it can make life a lot easier. One of the questions I have is, um, and maybe we touched on this a little bit earlier, is do you help people figure out how to price their programs for the consumer? 
Yes. So uh, we can definitely talk, like have a session where we're just talking about pricing. So, and I'll give you kind of the short version so that people can think about how they would do it. Um, you can go out and look at what's already out there and sort of what the pricing is. Don't use that as gospel because <laughs> there are websites, um, if you've ever heard of something called Udemy is one of them. There's another one called Skillshare. And basically those are marketplaces for courses. So all kinds of instructors put their courses on there. The problem is you don't control your own audience. So you can't have follow-up courses where you're emailing folks. It's, it's all sent through those marketplaces. And then they also control the pricing. So, and, and they have some, a lot of 10, $20 courses. And if, I want you guys, if you're going to go to all this trouble to create a course, like let's get you some, some higher priced courses. If you want to put something on there to maybe as a lead generator or to show up, you can, but make it, you know, make it a 10 or a $20 course that you're putting on there. But let's, let's do your 497, 997, 1997 kind of courses and, and, and get the pricing up. Julie, one of the things I was at a, a webinar with a bunch of speakers around the country and one of the, the presenter talked about three levels and I really like this model and it really takes what you're saying, but what the concept is, is that you sell a four hour program for $79. Uh -huh. People want to upgrade to a deeper point. They be, they sign up for a $395 program. Then they, if they sell 20% of those people for a two day retreat. So you're really, giving them content, but not all the apples in the basket, but maybe the basket and a few apples. And then the next one, you fill the apples up halfway and then they have to pay for the full bucket. So I, I think that's what you're saying. But I, th one of the big things in the speaking industry is our intellectual property is valuable. And to right. keep it, if it's $20, people saying, is that what you think of your value? Right. So no. the point where you have to feel somewhat comfortable at a certain level to feel that it's worthy of people seeing that you're an expert. Because if you're an expert and you're selling a poem for $30, what kind of expert is that? Right. So I had to think about that as well. That's why I'm not a huge fan of the, the Udemy Skillshare. There have been folks I know that have been there huge and sold you know thousands and thousands and thousands of courses on there. Then I think there's an awful lot of experts that, that um, fall down into their marketplace and and don't get all the promotion and and then their courses are selling you know it, you, trust me from that 1495 ebook that was the biggest lesson I learned was you have to sell a lot of those to make any kind of reasonable income from it so well, I don't they even pay back what you invested to put it out exactly exactly <laughs> so that's why we want to have your own course on your own site that you promote sell and have your own course business that you can set the pricing and, and work with your clients specifically. So have you seen any um, evidence that in terms of length of each course, whether it's per session, like how long should your each uh, session of the course be versus how long should the entire course be? Really good question. I, I signed up this past summer for this it was 12 weeks. I lost interest after, you know, about six, eight weeks. And it was like, it was all I could do to tune into the last two or three. Right. And so I like to see folks try to stay around a six module kind of course. Cause that's usually about how much attention people can have is six modules. You think about it like six weeks, that's pretty good. Um, and then underneath the module, sometimes you, you know, four to six lessons, if, if your process can fit into that, that can be really, really a good model. And then only making the lessons like less than 10 minutes long, because I don't know about you guys, but when I get in and I see a video that says, yeah, this video is an hour long, it just makes me kind of go, yeah, oh, I don't want to do it. But when I see, oh, it's a six minute video, I'm like, okay, I can get that one done before I have to move on to something else. So if you have a lot of six, you know, eight, 10 minute videos, if, you, if you're thinking six modules, even if you had six lessons a piece, that's 36 lessons, about six minutes or so a piece, or even 10 minutes, I'll give you 10 minutes, I'll make our math 
easy. You know, that's 360 minutes, six hours total for the whole course. So if you can kind of fit into that, I think that that's a good model. It, it, not all courses can fit into that. And some things, you know, you may need a little, a lesson longer here or there, but that's kind of the basic model that I try to send people through. Well, and I, I know you have a, a journalism background and, and one of my next question kind of falls into, sometimes we get a lot of educators and PhDs and doctors and therapists and they're, they're talking up here and we need to help, and I don't want to use the phrase dumb down, but we need to bring it down to a level that's more um, chewable in the marketplace <laughs> that people understand. Can you help someone um, bring that down to a understandable level? Yeah, so that comes with having a really good editor that's helping you through, depending on how you put your lessons together. And it's probably the same thing, like when you work with your book authors, they get editors to kind of help them with that. Yeah, if if that's um, one of the pro I don't want to say problems, but one of the challenges with getting your course done, definitely get um, an editor. I can refer a couple of people that I okay. know that can help kind of um, help you put your scripts together, put your lessons together so that it's in everyday language. Gotcha. Terrific. But that is a good point. The other thing, the other big mistake I see a lot of people do, they want to put everything they know into their course. Mm -hmm. And that's really hard to do. And it's terrible for students. They don't want to know everything you know about a topic. And I was, I'll give you an example. I was in a podcasting course um, a couple years ago. And the, the instructor said, I want you to go out to Amazon. I want you to buy this mic, this filter, this arm, and um, buy it today. You'll have it by the end of the week, and we're going to start recording. So he didn't tell us about the 50 different kinds of microphones, even though he knew about them, and he knew all the different pluses and minuses and all the different pricing. He just said, go buy this one, this one, this one, and we'll get you started. And that was so refreshing as a student. Like, I didn't have to think about it and make a decision. Right. right. So does anybody else have any questions before we jump off? I want to make sure we get everybody's questions answered. You've had a wealth of information today. Thank you, Julie. It's oh, good. I hope it was helpful for everyone. Very informative. Yeah. Yes. Thank you, Julie. Oh, you're welcome. Definitely. And please come, come join up if you can. Come visit the site and stuff. Um, I try to share every week some good ideas or techniques or different things that I found or we help with marketing courses and stuff. So I try to like give you guys all really good information on getting your courses done. So love Terrific. to have you join us. Thank we you. have um, in November on the third Thursday, we'll have, wait, is that right? No, October. October is next. Thank you. October is next. That's Feels right. like Thank October you. already. I know. <laughs> October, um, we'll be having a conversation with Carrie Bauman. She's part of the New Shelves group out of New York, and they have expertise in helping you market your book to libraries and bookstores and uh, gift shops and those types of things. So um, we'll have a conversation with her on the third Thursday in October. Thank you everybody for being here today. There will be a follow-up email that has a link to the YouTube and to the audio channel or recording. And we'll also include, Julie will include your information on there, the same that you've got here. Oh, and I appreciate that, thank you. If anybody has any information, please reach out to Julie Hood. And uh, if you have any, any questions about anything that we do, please reach out to me or Julie Hoey, who's also on today's call. So thank you guys for being here. We'll see you in October. Thank you. Bye now. Thank, thank you to all of you. Take care, Bye -bye. everybody. Bye. Bye. Thanks, Kathy. Bye-bye, Julie.